Paxton Show, your countdown to the future. First, I want you to take down my phone number in case you want to call. The number is 501-437-2963. In case you didn't get it, here it is again. 501-437-2963. Sorry, but we can't accept collect calls. Our topic for tonight is after the election. It's from uh, the Survivor, Volume 8. 1992. I don't write much about politics because they're so repetitious. My age allows me to remember my own elders who had experienced pretty much the same chain of events we've gone through in the past few years. Hoover wasn't the direct cause of the Great Depression, but he was blamed for it. Bush wasn't the direct cause for our recession, but he's blamed for it. The American people have voted for change, so Clinton was elected. Roosevelt inaugurated many social programs to end the Great Depression. Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, National Recovery Act, NRA, Social Security, etc. Did little, if anything, to end the Great Depression. Clinton's proposed solutions will do even less good. During the Great Depression, the U.S. population was 135 million, and most of them were fairly intelligent and industrious with maybe 100,000 or so social dependents. Today's population is over 250 million. There are about 100 million social dependents. About 35 million are on welfare and 41 million are 65 or older. Then there are the unemployed drawing benefits, the homeless, the hopeless turning to crime, those in prisons, nut houses, etc., nearly all unproductive, all living off the taxpayers, of which there are fewer as the months roll on. What brought on the Great Depression was a surplus population. That surplus population caused the Great Depression through the looting of the easily available resources and overuse of the land leading to the death bowl. Gearing up industry and more advanced farming methods to supply the Allies fighting Germany eased the Depression. Then, fighting World War II ended the Depression, not politics or economics. War production is artificial economics and wasteful make-work. Its only positive aspect is the technological advancement. But the Japanese have proven military research inferior to commercial and scientific research. When the war ended, production soared, but it was less production than a maniacal waste of resources, land, metals, petroleum. Shortly, the economy slowed down. Korea, another upsurge and a downward trend, and then Vietnam. Came Desert Storm, which should have been called Desert Drizzle, and Bush sent half a million to do a job which could have been done by a division of Marines. Desert Storm was fought to assure Bush's billionaire buddies that their oil interests were secure. That cost American business $50 billion, and the taxpayers' tab was another $50 billion. If Bush's war was an attempt to boost the economy, it was only a lesson that war doesn't work that way anymore. Not only have America's wars for the American dream been wasteful of resources and a series of economic frauds, but they sacrificed the best for the worst. While many of the genetically best were taken out of the gene pool, the weaklings and degenerates were left at home to reproduce their blighted kind. A relatively small percentage, of course, but too many nonetheless. Regardless, the average IQ in America today is about 15 points lower than in 1940, and there are many more millions of the incompetent. Each generation is dumber than the last, dreaming their lives and futures away. I want you to read my editorial, The Marching Morons, page 990 of Survivor 3. Also, read Lothrop Stoddard's 1922, Revolt Against Civilization in U.S. Militia, plus The Citizen Menace, page 94 of PMJB3. These works will show you that along with the artificial economics of our system are millions of useless people who are not only parasitic but destructive. Regardless of attempts to reorganize the systems, these destructive parasites will not only use up any gains but are poised to destroy any system which will not accommodate them. What happened to the American dream? We heard that phrase repeated over and over during the election campaigns and debates. The truth is that the American dream has only been a dream all along. It was taught almost as a religion. Had the American reality been taught instead, people would have learned that a system can't go on forever using up unrenewable resources for quick profit. A realistic system of perpetual recycling would eliminate the cycles of boom and bust, war and peace. But, of course, this would entail the compulsory sterilization of social dependents, morons, criminals, and mental cases. 
As it is, our system is being swamped by millions of parasites born only to consume and pollute. Moreover, our medical facilities are being strained to the breaking point and billions of taxpayer dollars are wasted prolonging useless life. You've probably heard or read much the same before from others, only they never tell you what you can do about it or offer solutions to the overall problem of just too many unproductive and unemployable people. Instead, they give you this, we're all in this together nonsense. Well, if you were a cow and were near a great herd of cattle stampeding over a cliff, you'd be expected to join them, because you'd be a cow, you see. To think like that is normal for a cow, but abnormal for a person. We're not cattle, we're people. We're all different. We have different backgrounds, different levels of intelligence, skills, education, abilities, frames of reference, etc. Your frame of reference is all the experience and teachings that you were exposed to since you were born. If you're like most people, your frame of reference was imposed on you by others. You think their thoughts, share their fears, beliefs, and hopes. You believe your parents, your teachers, your ministers, the politicians. You don't feel the need to check anything for yourself. You believe them and in them, and for the most part, they believe in you and in each other. Can you blame them for being hopelessly locked into a system they can't see as doomed? Only if your own life experiences have shocked you out of the American dream can you shake yourself loose from the belief systems imposed on you. Even then, you may simply discard one set of beliefs for another. The true individualist, however, makes the conscious decision to know rather than believe. He relies only on his own observations. Few people can do this, so most can indeed be compared to cattle. This puts me in mind of the Jews who were herded into the concentration camps, sort of like cattle. But the cattle analogy began long before the herding. For years, Nazi propaganda stirred up hatred. As the persecution worsened, Millions of Jews realized that the system was not working for them and they could not work in it, nor could they work for a change. They got out, no matter what it took. Their friends and relatives told them, the Nazis will ease up, our God will intervene, you have too much at stake to leave, you're needed, we must all stick together. But they had the individuality to discard belief in favor of the evidence of their own senses. They lived. So the election is over. Clinton is a dreamer. He was elected by many millions of other dreamers. But Bush could not have improved the situation he and Reagan allowed and even hastened our decline by concerning themselves only with their masters, the power elite. Now the chaos is coming. If you still believe you are in this together with the others, my works won't help you. But if you see yourself as an individual with a purpose rather than a mindless cell in the body politic, you will set about actually doing something outside your routine. If you can't motivate yourself to doing something which hasn't already been programmed into you, you can never create a change. And unless you are willing to create a change, you have no hope of escaping the fate of those who are all in this together. So consider this if you have children or other loved ones. Will you leave their security up to Clinton or yourself? If you trust yourself more than Clinton, you must learn to rely on yourself to provide the necessities and even security to bring yourself and those closest to you through the chaos to come. The most important things to your survival are food and shelter. Most people are totally dependent in these areas. For very little, you can assure yourself of a food supply. By practicing food economy, you can save enough to pay the rent. Do you consider guaranteeing your food supply important? Those who are all in this together don't. As our system disintegrates, most cities will burn. The police and National Guard may cordon off the areas as they did during the L.A. riots or they may go in shooting and kill thousands. Even so, they will be spread too thinly to maintain order. You might as well realize that with over over 200 million rifles, shotguns, and pistols in private hands, civilians so outgun the police, National Guard, and military that they might as well desert and go home to protect their own. As federal, state, and city governments pack it in, you can be sure that there will be militia units operating in and around your neighborhood. If gangs and political radicals are allowed to set themselves up as militia, they will only exploit and rob, as is done by the petty warlords and their militia in Somalia. Community protection against violent outsiders will be essential, so each community must organize its own militia. This would be made up of able-bodied males regulated and trained by experienced men with roots in the community. U.S. militia will tell you how to organize your community's defense. It will even show you how to put your unit on a profit-making basis. The employed militiamen will be a lot more reliable. 
And if the unit is run as a business, it will be a lot easier to regulate than if it were made up of unpaid volunteers. If you are an entrepreneur to any degree, a U.S. militia unit might be your opportunity for success because, as the system fails, those who can defend the community and organize life-sustaining enterprises to keep it going will be the upper classes of the future. Now that the election is over, you'll see things getting more and more out of control. The Bush administration is through propping things up, and the Clinton crowd doesn't know how. Clinton certainly didn't learn anything from being governor of Arkansas for 12 years. So don't despair. Use the chaos ahead to show what you can do to save some of the best and establish yourself as one of the new power elite. Learn to live well through the well-being of others. Then the terrible times to come might be somewhat justified. Okay, here I am again. The phone number is 501-437-2963. The frequency, in case you just wandered on it, is 5.810 megahertz. And the mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. And if you send in $10, you'll get an introductory packet consisting of a sample copy of U.S. Militia, the only magazine for community defense, a shoestring entrepreneur telling you how to sell anything you can make or grow, and a copy of David Koresh's Last Testament. Here's a call. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Uh, yes, I ordered your uh, your introductory kit about three weeks ago, and I've not yet received it. Well, uh, it'll limp along, but give it another week, and if it hasn't uh, gone out, then we'll send you another one. At, uh, I think all kinds of things have really held up the post office, and we were sending them out bulk mail, but now we're sending them out uh, a book rate, which is considerably faster, and we don't wait until we get 200. So be a little patient. Uh, they are getting there. And you'll get yours soon, but like I said, if it doesn't get there in a week, which it should, then call me. It might have gone astray. We'll be glad to send you one, another one at no charge. Okay, real fine. Okay, bye for now. Okay, phone number again is 501-437-2963. The mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Hello, Kurt here. Hi, doing, Kirk? Fine. Uh, yes, I wanted to ask your opinion. If you had the opportunity to uh, put away a little gold, would you go for the numismatic or the uh, the bullion? Well, uh, I guess I would. It, it would all depend on which costs more per ounce. The numismatic. Does that cost more than per ounce? Then I'd go for the bullion. Yeah. But I don't. Oh, turn your radio down, incidentally. Uh, I don't. I don't much care for gold. If you've got uh, gold in your stock, I think you'd do better to uh, buy some kind of machine tools or something for your trade. Do you have any sort of trade? Uh, no, not at the moment. I don't. I'm going to school. Yeah. Well, what are you taking? Uh, respiratory therapy. Well, are you going to be in the health industry? And for a while, that's going to be really good. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, but. Uh, I think that you should uh, consider starting a little home business. Uh, I, I ordered your information pack about a week ago, and I'm going to yeah. wait. And get okay, it. I hope you get it soon. You'll like it. Okay. Okay, buddy. Thanks a lot, Kirk. Okay, bye for now. Okay, the phone number again is 501-437-2963. The mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. And if you would rather order, uh, like, for instance, the poor man's James Bond, uh, which is just to <laughs> I'll tell about that later. Uh, Kurt Saxon here. Hi, Kurt. Uh, Mike from Dallas, Texas. Okay, Mike. Hey, I just want to say I really like your show. I appreciate it. I listen every night. And uh, you've probably been asked this question before, but how long do you estimate before these events start to transpire? Well, uh, I tell you, they're, they're happening uh, all over the world. Uh, what you're mainly asking is how long before these events are going to hit your neighborhood. Exactly. That's what I'm getting at. And what, what's your neighborhood? The Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, I'd move. <laughs> I'd, I would move, yes. Yes. Houston is just about done yeah, for. Yeah, I agree with that. One other question. Uh, would it, is it safe to ask what that music is that you play at the beginning of your show? I really like that, too. Well, that's the Strauss Waltz. Uh, I think I'll have to look it up if I can. Uh, I, I don't know what uh, the 
the uh, well, my engineer is looking. He might be able to find which one it is. That's okay. If you can give it some other time or something, let us know. I'm just curious because I really it's, like that. Oh, it's Vienna Blood. Vienna Blood? Yes. Very interesting. That's a beautiful song. It is. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Okay, phone number is 501-437-2963, P.O. Box uh, 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. And again, with the poor man sings Bond, 477 pages of improvised weaponry. You can never be disarmed because if they take away a gun for some reason or another, uh, you can make another one in, a, in an afternoon. And... Uh, so it's just all full of improvised weaponry, martial arts, uh, all kinds of do-it-yourself stuff. That costs you $18, uh, $4 postage and handling. And uh, then, of course, we've got volumes 2, 3, and 4. That's, that's a whole encyclopedia of do-it-yourself mayhem. And uh, so it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like, for instance, volume 3 has an 1868 gunsmithing course in case you're into gunsmithing and you want to redo old rifles. Especially if you go to uh, gun shows, you can buy an old rifle. Well, you buy a lot of old rifles there, redo them, and make them up for, for museums or collectors or whatever. And Volume 3 also has uh, silencers from the home workshop. It takes a lathe, but I want you to get one anyway. You might as well. Of course, now, if you're making a silencer, I'll tell you this just confidentially. Make it, use it, and throw it away. And don't ever sell a weapon which is illegal. Don't ever do that because the... the, the time you spend in jail is not anywhere worth the little bit profit you'd make. Besides, you'd probably be selling it to an undercover agent, too. So if you're going to have anything to do with weapons, get an FFL while the getting's good before the price goes up. And that way you're, you're all down and uh, you're recorded and all, and the ATF knows all about you, and they think you're a good fellow, which you most likely are. And then they disregard you totally, and they go running after fresh game, see? So uh, I'm waiting for a call here. The number is 501-437-2963. Also, uh, if you would like, you can just subscribe to Shoestring Entrepreneur. And uh, that's $15, and you'll get about nine back issues of The Survivor at no charge. And uh, that'll teach you how to get into business no matter what situation you're in. And uh, then, of course, there's the... U.S. Militia. Get back to that. Hello, Kurt here. Hi, Kurt. I got your packet today. Good. When did you order it? Oh, probably a month ago. Well, you see, so they're they're finally limping in, but like I said, I'm sending them out a book rate now instead of bulk rate. Yeah, I really, man, I really was laughing. I, I like that uh, story you had about Clarence. Well, he's a kick. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Well, if you should decide to subscribe, you'll get two more about him, and then I'm working on issue four now, uh, Radio Beams from Mars. Is there, I noticed there was a footnote on he, he was making these shotguns uh, with, uh, I guess, steel pipe and pipe. Yeah. And uh, there was a footnote or a page number. Do, do you show how to make those? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, it shows you how to make it in issue one. And then it shows you how to make the padding for it in issue two, so that you don't, uh, you're not bothered by any recoil. Uh, is this in the poor man James Bond? No, no, that is in uh, uh, U.S. Militia. Okay. You see, you you subscribe. Of course, now you get five dollars off of your subscription since you uh, got the intro packet. Yeah. But you, you'd start out with uh, three issues. Uh, that would be the one you already have, and you give that to a friend if you've got one. Okay. And then you'd get nine more in the mail. That's great. Uh, that, that, <laughs> that thing about Clarence is really wild. Well, he's he's a lovable psychotic. Uh, he's a mass murderer, <laughs> but he doesn't really know it, and he's doing it all for you. I thought the funniest thing was I thought it was this $200 in my shoe you were after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's a great story. I'm just flipping through it uh, tonight, and it looks really good. Yeah. Well, I think you're going to love Clarence until his psychiatrist finally recovers from a stroke and recalls him. Okay, all right. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye for now. Okay, uh, phone number is 501-437-2963. The post office box is 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. And uh, U.S. Militia, again, is $35 for 12 issues. 
And, uh, hello, Kurt Saxon here. Yeah, hello, Kurt. Uh, just wanted to say that I uh, got your packet. Uh, it took about... Oh, turn your radio down. Okay, sorry. Yeah, okay. But it took about three and a half weeks to get here. And while I was waiting for the packet, I went ahead and ordered the subscription for the U.S. militia. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneur, and that came before the packet did. Yeah, well, did, did you read all of the stories about Clarence? Well, yet? I haven't read them all yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I have a kind of a time problem. I'm working two jobs, and so I'll get to it as, you know, as soon as I can slow down enough to do so. Yeah. I did, I did have a question. Uh, I've got a, uh, I live in the city, and I'm planning to move out if I ever have the chance. Yeah. But I have this uh, nuisance dog that chews up stuff and tears up stuff, and he runs loose. Uh, I don't know who the dog belongs to. I was just wondering, in all of your material, is there any way to teach a, a, a loose dog a good lesson or bump him off or something? Well, I think the best thing to do would be to take him in and have a friend for life. I, I should have expected that answer. That's a good answer. But uh, We do that all the time. We regret it every time, but we still do it. Yeah. We love them. we got 23 cats. Oh, wow. Okay. But uh, they're children, and uh, they mean well. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's nice. Nice thing to say about dogs. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so just uh, want to tell your listeners just to be patient about the packet, the ones that ordered it. Yeah, well, it'll all limp in, but like I've said, if uh, something happens and if you're pretty sure it's just not going to get there, we'll just send you another one. Yeah. But when it comes to, to dogs, a dog is a very great survival thing because uh, it's good for guard once it knows its territory, especially if you got it as a house dog. Uh, there's nothing better to uh, ward off uh, prowlers, and uh, they they do make very good friends. Okay. Well, I'll think about making a friend with the dog. Then. You do that. <laughs> okay. Call him Kurt. <laughs> okay, that's a good name. Okay, well, anyway, Kurt, I appreciate your show and the effort you're making, and it's a real eye-opener. Uh, I, I used to look, listen, listen to Rush Limbaugh, but now I think he's uh, well, not doing much good for his listeners, but... Uh, but I think you're doing a great job for your listeners, and so keep it up. Well, thank you very much. Okay, goodbye. Bye for now. Okay, again, the phone number is 501-437-2963. The mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Yeah, Kurt, um, I heard you, well, I don't know, a week or so ago, you made a, a statement, uh, like, hang on to your Confederate money and... The South will rise again. Yeah, I, I'm just curious. Are, are you advocating secession by the South, or I, I I don't really understand what you were saying, or was that more or less just kind of tongue in cheek? Or well, I didn't make up the saying, but uh, I no, I understand that, but I, you were kind of saying it. And I yeah. just if, if, well, uh, the, the I I consider the South to be the most safe area, and it's got the most uh, individual liberties if you want to uh, look at it that way. It's an easygoing, laid-back area, and uh, people are nicer and more honest. Like when I went up to the Jerry Springer show a few months ago, I got to my hotel room about 12, going to go on next day and uh, listen to their news report all through the, uh, through the day there and uh, found that there was more crime in the city of Chicago than there is in the whole state of Arkansas. Yeah, and well, I, I can easily believe that. Oh, there's probably more people in the city. Well, there certainly is, but you see, they're a better class of people. They're raised right. Uh, they don't uh, tend to take anything that they can get away with. They're polite. Also, you see, in the South, as opposed to Chicago and New York and New Jersey and things like that, everybody has a gun in the home, and everybody knows it. Now, they, they have guns, and well, they're raised with guns uh, for a couple of hundred years. It's a tradition. And so everybody has, it's not so much that they are armed in that sense. They simply have guns. They, uh, it's part of the tradition. Yeah. And so people are not so quick to break into people's houses because they're pretty sure that they will get shot. Uh-huh. So it's a, the, we, the crime rate, for instance, in Harrison, Arkansas, the town right next to us, is practically nil. I think uh, a, a man shot his estranged wife about four years ago, and that's about all there is to it. But as far as, and there are, every once in a while there's teenage burglars, 
but uh, it's because they know their people and they know when they're going to be home and so on like that. But it's not crime like uh, you see in the cities. It's not vicious. It's not uh, roving gangs. Right. Right. Well, I've, I've been living in Minnesota for the past 15 years, and I'm going to move two states south. I'm going, yeah. to, going to Missouri, so I'll be... Well, Missouri is a good place, and... and uh, uh, it, it, well, a, a town right across the border in Missouri is uh, there's a law which says that you must have a gun in your home. Oh, Hollister, yes. Okay. Uh, you have to have a gun in your home, and there is no crime whatever in, in Hollister. Yeah, I know that there's there's some uh, statistics in the American Survival Guide on, on the states that have passed the concealed carry mm-hmm. laws, and their murder rates have gone down, too. So I... Uh, that... that I'm sure that you know the bur- burglar that knows that there's a gun in every house is just going to go to the next town. <laughs> yeah, well, he in, in, in Arkansas and Missouri and certain places like that, he usually goes to the next state. Yeah, well, that's good too. <laughs> so, well, I just wanted to call and find out. Just, I mean, if you were, you know, advocating secession or what you were really saying. Well, I don't go in for politics. Uh, I wouldn't care if the state seceded. It wouldn't matter to me. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know. Clinton would probably come after you and tell you you couldn't do that. Well, Clinton never told me anything when he was governor. I don't think he'll got anything I'm interested in, in uh, when, since he's president. Well, I'm just glad send, to get him out of the send state. Butch Reno after you, though. Well, I don't know about help you, you know. Janet Reno. I, I People got the wrong idea about Janet Reno. Uh, I saw her nearly 30 years ago when she was in show business. When I was a young man, and I used to go to burlesque shows, and she uh, featured herself as Reno Jeanette and her two golden cockatiels, <laughs> and she would prance out on the stage with a, uh, a cockatiel on both shoulders and dressed in nothing but two stars and a cork, and she would sashay around, and the crowd would go wild. Now, you see, she won't do that anymore which shows a great deal of social consciousness. Yeah. So uh, just sort of bless her and send her on her way. She's no harm to anybody. Well, I think you got some people in Waco that probably disagree with you there, but I, I'm not here to argue that point either. Yeah. So, all right, well, I'll let you go. Let somebody else get in. Okay, bye for now. Take it easy. Okay, the phone number is 501-437-2963. The mailing address for the information packet is uh, P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Send in $10, and you'll get a great thing. Uh, hello, Kurt Saxon here. Good evening, Kurt. Good evening. This is Bernice. Oh, Bernice, I got your uh, recipe for couscous today. Good. And I, I too, received a nice packet of the Survivors. Yes, well, I just thought I would send you some because you're going to send me that recipe. Well, I sent you some others. You didn't get a chance to look at them over yet, did you? Oh, I have spent the entire day. I didn't go to the post office until today. Yes. And apparently they they came in on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I missed all that good reading over the weekend when the yes. weather was so... Well, it wasn't the nicest. Mm-hmm. But, oh, I really like this. Well, that that was the uh, several copies of the Survivor, which of course is free to anyone who subscribed to Shoestring uh, Entrepreneur. Well, I, I am just, um, of course, you know, there's a lot of uh, woodwork in there. Yes. But now this past summer, I, you know, I that was I, I I knew very little about carpentry, you know. Yes. But I helped a nurse friend. Uh, she's building a a care facility for. Uh, the elderly, and this building is 50 by 30. Yes. And the uh, um, and she put this all on 16 centers. You know, mm-hmm. so you can imagine all those two by fours she used. Yes. It's strictly wood. So I went there uh, at something that I, you know, as a learning yes uh, situation, and uh, she and the carpenter have built this building and. So I helped them. Um, you know, he uh, taught me how to use a skill saw and and uh, also how to to figure the uh, the pitch of a roof. 
And mm -hmm. so I thought it was a very learning situation. Well, everybody should do that. Well, I think so, because you never know when you might have to throw something together to cover your head, you know? Well, you see, in the good old days when people had barn raisings and house raisings, everybody in the neighborhood learned all kinds of things like that. They did, and you know, it was a group effort. Yeah. That's what made it nice. Well, those, those things are coming back. Oh, I hope so. But now, there's one, one recipe that I, that I found very interesting, and that was the, the potato cheese. Oh, now, uh, I'll tell you, do you think you can make that? I don't know, but Why I'll don't you give it try. a try. <laughs> now, that is from 1830. Right, and I, and I, 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 I particularly like the, the recipes from 1927 that yes. you had in there. Those were uh, biscuits and uh, cornbread and uh, pancakes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy older recipes and older hints. Yeah, well, the survivor and, and Schuster and entrepreneur is just full of material like that that people can start using right away. Well, good. I thought I had some ideas, but I'll tell you, it's really, really added to my, to, to my knowledge, you know? Well, Grover is bringing down you a copy of uh, Volume 1 of The Survivor. You'll just find page after page of really wonderful stuff in that. Well, good. And um, I, I really, really thank you for, for sending me this armload of, of uh, the Survivor because it's very interesting. Well, I'm glad you think so, Bernice. And by the way, my chicken started laying this weekend. So did mine. <laughs> we, we get uh, at least two eggs a day, and uh, they're little bitty eggs because they're aracanas. Yeah. But, uh, well, it's not so much the, the size of the egg, it's how large the yolk. Well... The yolks aren't very large either, but they're laying eggs, and that's what I'm proud of. And they are very uh, dark yellow rather than the puny pale mess that you get in the store. Well, you know, that particular breed of chicken, the eggs are free of cholesterol. Anyone yeah. that must watch their cholesterol level can eat these eggs. Mm -hmm. Well, my main point that I was trying to make was that uh, if you have free-ranging chickens, True. Your eggs are much better. They're tastier. Mm. Uh, the stuff that they uh, raise where they never get out of their coop, uh, they're, they're hardly fit to eat. They're just about as mm. tasteless as Tyson chickens here in Arkansas. That's true. That's true. That's true. Well, Kirk, you have a good evening. You too, Bernice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, the phone number again is 501-437-2963. The mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Send in, whoops, another call. Hello, Kurt here. Kurt, how are you doing? Fine. Uh, I've been reading the Bible for the last three years. and uh, Yes? I was wondering, do you know where they refer to the feast? Well, that's in Revelation. Okay, but uh, every time I read that, I think of the, I think of the black person. Why? Why? Because uh, most of them are hanging out in the street corners, starting the trouble. Well, I know, but uh, there's a lot of them who aren't. We, uh, you know, it said if we sin, well, I know, but you we'll see, end up with the feet. At the time of the Bi at the time the Bible was written, there were no Negroes in Judea, so obviously they didn't know about them. Well, if they didn't know, about them, they, they only wrote about what he could envision. And the people who wrote the Bible had a very narrow frame of reference. So uh, you shouldn't when take... They wrote, well, when they wrote about God and everything, or Jesus, we'll say. Well, okay. Uh, Jesus' miracle. Yeah, but you see, Jesus was right there. And whoever wrote Revelation probably knew people who had known Jesus. So you don't think they have... You know, I don't think that that was any reference to anybody in our oh. time reference to the black color guy on the corner. No, no. The color black guy on the corner. I mean, the the, uh, the guy who uh, killed that little 12-year-old girl was a beast, and he was white. Yeah, he does, they should string him up by his testicles. Well, yeah. sure they should. I would love to do it myself after or I skinned him alive. Use those words, but that's what they, they should do to him. Well, I know, but you that's see... That's a terrible thing. Where I'm arguing with you is that you shouldn't think that the beast has to do with any ethnic group because uh, I'm not really a racist, uh, although most people think I am. I don't care if people think I am, but you ought to... Racist either, but yes. it, it seems like three-quarters of the crime are committed by this one group. You're absolutely right. 
Yeah. And it, it's pretty hard not, you know, it's pretty hard to live your life not thinking. Well, I know, but you see, now in New Zealand, uh, three quarters of the crime is committed by the Maoris. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not Negro. Uh... See, well, we're we're talking about an underclass. Where, where you have an underclass, you have a criminal class. Oh yeah, so, so there's going to be a criminal class wherever you go. Yes, where... but they will invariably be the underclass. Yeah. And so the underclass should be sterilized. At least those who can't make it. Uh, the ones who can make it, uh, they will not be the underclass. It's weird. In the United States, the uh, underclass is basically the good American working person. Well, no. I'm, when I talk about underclass, I mean the social underclass, those who are on welfare, those who tend to criminality, those who are ignorant, yeah, but, uneducated, can't be educated. But, like I was watching a Geraldo, no, it was a Jerry Springer show today, I think it was, where they're talking about the, the blacks and their, I forget what they call their, their jargon, their slang. Uh, they, they, they're trying to learn a language of their own. They can't fit in, and they're encouraging each other not to fit in. And of course, this is insanity by very ignorant people, but there were some blacks there, like that Dr. Marva Evers or whatever, I think. Uh, she was totally against that. There were several blacks there who were totally against that. They said, if you want to get uh, along in society, you've got to learn society's language. And what these people were doing, they were further ghettoizing themselves. And when you have people like that, uh, they're, they're doomed. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's tough to say because there's a lot of uh, white people who want to get a job, but they can't. Because well, uh, if her. if they really wanted a job, they'd do a little more for their education. Yeah, but a lot of them, where, where I'm from, a lot of these big companies, like Remington Arms, they're closing up. They're moving out of here. Well, I guess they're moving to Mexico, aren't they? No, they they, they, they closed up three years ago before this uh, deal ever came around. With, with why, why did they close up? Basically because of the crime in the area. Oh, okay, okay. Okanenta. What What area were they in? Uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Oh, okay. Well, you see, meanwhile, Bridge, that's a very liberal area, isn't it? No, no, it's a very bad area. But meanwhile, these people are trying to work, but we got these groups. That, I, I shouldn't say groups. We got these individual street punk people. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're they're making it hard for decent people trying to work. And meanwhile, these decent people are ending up on welfare, affecting unemployment. Well, these decent people should subscribe to Shoestring Entrepreneur. Maybe they should, but I don't they know should. if they have a shortwave receiver or not. Well, you you spread... got to get on the AM dial then. Yeah, well, I I'll, I'd love to, but in the meantime, you it's spread. Expensive. You ought to you ought to start a, a U.S. militia unit, and see when all of this blows over. So we we got a local of uh, Guardian Angels. We got a local group, mm -hmm. but they they can only go so far. Well, they just act like nuthouse attendants. Uh, I, I'm not going to put them down. They do a very well, I'm good. not putting them down. I, I used to be a nut house attendant, so I know that's what the way they do. They don't carry weapons. They don't uh, uh, kill these people. But they do a very good job. But they just, you know, they can't go so they can't go as far as they want to to prove the point to these people. We're not going to take it. Well, you see, unlike U.S. militiamen, the guardian angels do not convince the criminal. That if he yeah, doesn't but, uh, get out of the uh, neighborhood, uh, wait, don't interrupt me. No, they okay, don't convince. They don't. Wait a minute. They don't convince the criminal that if he doesn't get out of the neighborhood, that he's not going to live long. Yeah, but I okay. have my feeling if, if if you take legal actions in your own own hand, you're just as guilty as the criminal. I don't think so because the no, criminal the, the, way, no. the criminal is the attacker. I know, but but if you do something just as bad as him. Well, my philosophy say if I, is... Just say if I went out and shot the person or broke his leg. Yeah? I'm just as guilty as him as beating up somebody on, the, somebody on the street corner. Why? In a way, I am. Why? Because I just committed the same crime he did. On him? But for a different reason. Well, you see, my philosophy and the philosophy of U.S. militia is to treat the criminal the way he treats his victim. Now, however you want to judge that, it's that, your yeah, privilege. It's but I don't care what happens... Uh, if a person wants to hurt me, I don't owe him anything. But in a way, in a way, you're going to feel like a vigilante group. Well, it wouldn't be a vigilante group because it wouldn't be untrained volunteers. But in a way, that's, you, you don't feel that's what's going to turn into? No, because they would be trained and they wouldn't be volunteers. Uh, and like, they would also be paid. Like 
campfire with gas. You throw a little more gas on it. Well, uh, like well, how we got into the U.S. deficit. We started spending a little money we didn't have. Now look where we are. Well, you, you used that collectivist we. I didn't oh, yeah, do it, and I don't think you I'm did not either. I'll argue with you, but, you know, you got to think of it that way also. Well, you should subscribe to U.S. Militia. I, I, already, I already sent for the introductory packet. How long ago did you send? Uh, about a week and a half ago. Okay, it should be. this week I get it. Okay, it, it, you should get it in a few days. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking just... forward to the David Koresh story and everything. Yeah. Hey, okay. uh, do you want to hear a joke? Yes. It ain't too dirty. Uh, okay, just so it's not too dirty. Oh, what there's did, a lady uh, listening Jeffrey someplace. What did Jeffrey Dahmer say to uh, Aline Bobbitt? Well, say it again. What did Jeffrey Dahmer say to Aline Bobbitt? I don't know. Are you going to eat that? Oh, okay. I, I'll well, see you later. My engineer okay, got it bye first. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, the phone number is 501-437-2963. I would have flushed it down the toilet. But uh, the mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Hey, Kurt. How you doing? Fine. This is Joe down in Austin. Good for you, Joe. I've talked to you once before. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, in, I'm a TV producer, and I was wondering if you could explain a little bit about how you produce your show. Is it, do you do a... I know the TV... I mean, the transmitter is probably in Nashville, right? Yeah. And do you guys do a phone feed, or... Uh, and I, it's Arkansas. a phone feed, I know that. I beg your pardon? It's a phone feed to Nashville. Okay, so you just set up a, tele, a telephone yeah. feed out of there for mm-hmm. your hour. Oh, well, we got a whole three deck things, lots and lots of buttons. I don't dare touch anything. I'd get my hand slapped if I tried. Uh, it, it, it awes me. <laughs> but uh, that's about all I can tell you about it. But it is a phone feed, and uh, you call Nashville. Uh, if you want if, if you're really interested, you can... Uh, write me a card or something, and uh, I'll get... Well, look up WWCR in Nashville, or call information. Yes, I know where they are. I was just curious, basically, yeah. as to how you did it. I okay. I didn't know if you had a, a transmitter of your own. and then I'd Well, the transmitter is in my home, but it is a phone feed. It isn't just like picking up a phone. Uh, there's all kinds of things. Oh, so it might be satellite or something? I don't, I don't okay. think it's satellite. I don't... Okay. Also... Uh, like I said, down here in Austin, the uh, the cops aren't ready for the Brady Bill, of course, when it goes through, and I think that's all over the place where it's, yeah. they're not ready for the Brady Bill once it's in effect, right? Well, no, but uh, and I don't think they ever will be. Uh, the Brady Bill is going to make every gun seller rich. Right. But uh, As what, a matter of fact, um, I was at a gun show a while back, and I have never seen people buying guns like they're, they're buying them like they're, they're not going to ever be able to get another gun again. Well, I think that uh, the NRA and Brady are in bed together because uh, that's, <laughs> that's mutual cooperation on a grand scale. I heard scale. you say that. That must, that must be true. Also, um, I saw a news story the other night where uh, there is a loophole in the Brady Bill, and it does not affect gun shows. Did you know that? Nothing affects gun shows. I had a gun show publication for two years called The Gun Runner. We went to a gun show about every two weeks. And I saw as much business being done in the parking lot and under the table as uh, legally. Exactly. And the ATF have admitted publicly that they don't have the personnel to monitor the gun shows. Yeah. Well, I, that was my main concern when they had the Brady Bill is what it would do to gun shows. But well, you see, the, 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 the person selling guns, that's the way he makes his living. And in the same way as the welfare uh, person, uh, you, you know, a guy on welfare... People don't really realize it, but he doesn't work. Consequently, he has 24 hours a day to scheme how to find loopholes in the welfare so he can get more and more money. So you put the same kind of, of uh, restrictions on gun sellers, and they talk around at gun shows, and how do you get past this, and how do you get past that, and the gun sales are booming. It's like I said before, when Thomas Dodd in the 60s put out the most restrictive anti-gun legislation since the banning of the silencer and the Tommy gun, there were only about 50 million guns in uh, private hands, and now there are over 200 million. Also, if he were alive today and could go to a gun show, he would choke at the firepower that the civilian has now, as opposed to... uh, He wanted to ban guns. And as soon as he put out his uh, restrictive legislation, one of my good friends... uh, he, Walt Jewell, 
uh, drove from Hollywood to Phoenix and brought back a whole carload of guns, and he was selling pistols out of the trunk of his car on Hollywood Boulevard. He cleaned up. So these silly gun I think they're all just to pra- placate certain anti-gun liberals, but I'm sure if Brady and his wife knew how uh, their meddling in tradition was going to give such an upsurge in the gun business. Uh, like I said, I can't believe the way people are buying guns right now. Well, they are. They're just buying them like crazy, and especially ammunition. And ammunition is a good thing to buy if you buy the standard uh, brand, right. standard load. Good for barter. They'll never go lower in price. And uh, the, the, the gun business just loves Brady, and they don't know it. I mean, on the one hand, people act like they hate Brady, but on the other hand, the people who are dealing in guns just love them, and they say, give, give us another Brady and we'll retire. Absolutely. Okay, is that about it? Okay, well, nice to talk to you. Anytime. See you later. Bye for now. Okay, the number is 501-437-2963. The mailing address is P.O. Box 95, Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. Send in your $10 for the information packet, and you get a $5 refund on the subscription to either the U.S. Militia or Shoestring Entrepreneur. And uh, there's another call. Hello, Kurt here. Uh, Hello, Kurt. This is Paul in Hickory, North Carolina. Hi, Paul. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about your philosophy of neighborhoods uh, defending themselves. Yeah. Here in the South, I think you mentioned that the crime was less and everything. And that's because in the South we do have more of a philosophy of uh, being able to defend yourself. And yes. The police and all, they kind of take into account, the, uh, they give the homeowner the benefit of the doubt when he has to defend himself against a burglar. Yeah, but see, in Yankee land, they don't. That's right. I mean, they, you, you have to prove in court that, uh, that the, the burglar chased you out of your house, but you still couldn't get away from him. That's right. That's ridiculous. It is. Also down here, our police have a policy, especially in the smaller towns. It may not be this way in Atlanta, but in the smaller towns, when the the low-class neighborhood, the dark neighborhood, uh, Mm -hmm. tries to have a little mini L.A. type riot, police, as happened in this town one time, our police went in there and stomped them down and stopped it. They, They cracked some heads and they put some of them in jail. And it got stopped. They didn't let it run its course. They didn't let them victimize a lot of people and destroy a lot of property. They stopped it. Yes. We have our neighbor, our low-class black neighborhood know that there's only so far they can go. They can go, they holler, and they go out and throw rocks at cars going down the road and this sort of thing. But they know that there's only so, so much they can get away with. Yeah. As in New York and L.A. and Detroit, they know that they can do anything and get away with it. Yeah. Because everybody's scared of them. Down here, we're not quite that scared of them. We haven't been brainwashed into believing that we have to overlook anything they do or treat them like treat them special. And you probably have a much better class of blacks than uh, in, in the, the, the Yankee country. Uh, we do. I think we have more down here that work. And I've worked with some of them, and there's nothing wrong with the ones that work and take care of themselves. Yeah. And we... You know, anywhere where you've got them, you're going to have some that are on welfare and all, but uh, they do behave themselves a little bit better than they do in New York and L.A. That's yeah. Sure. And it's because we've stood up to them down here. Yes. And the, the media, the mainstream media, calls us a bunch of racists and backward hillbillies. Well, I'd rather be around this bunch of backward hillbillies than any New York liberal. Well, I tell you, if you go to New York, and I have gone to New York on several occasions when I was invited to be on TV shows, And New York gets dirtier and uglier every time I go there. And those people can call me anything they want, but they do not have my lifestyle. If I lived in a hut with a dirt floor, I would live better than the average New Yorker in a penthouse because I don't need armed guards to protect my life 24 hours a day. That's right. That's right. Uh, It's lifestyle and uh, standards and everything it's uh i don't know how to articulate this but it's it's the it's based on the person uh philosophy and the, the class of people you have and these uh so-called uh, elite people these these liberals that tend to think of themselves as being special people 
take away all of their comforts and their money, and they would starve just like the rest of the rest. Well, and they will. Uh, they're, they're doomed, and uh, it's just automatic. They don't have any survival potential at all. That, that sure because don't. they have been going on with the nonsense about uh, uh, all this love-mongering uh, to the point where when they are threatened, they won't have the guts to go back on what they've been preaching for so long. This is true. This is true. It's, it's amazing. They've took the propaganda of the media, they've took the left wing side, which they're all in it together, and the propaganda has gone to the point where there's just so many people that don't even believe they have the right to defend themselves. That's right. And you see, the liberals have brainwashed themselves. That's like, a, like on, on Cheers, where this guy is hypnotizing somebody, and Woody, he gets hypnotized too. Or, or, see, they hypnotize themselves. They brainwash themselves. It's people that don't have the ability to think for themselves. When they hear something a certain number of times, it becomes the truth, no matter how ridiculous and outrageous it is. Yes. They believe it, and that's what has happened in this country. And I try to talk to everyone I meet and try to try to uh, see how they feel about politics and about what's going on in our country. Yeah. There's so many of them. They're, they're un- it makes them uncomfortable to hear the truth. It makes them uncomfortable to talk about it or to think about it, or they just call me names. They just call me a racist or a paranoid or just whatever. Just well, you're, you're not nearly as much in danger as they are, and you can content yourself with that. Yes, I, I believe you're right. Well, okay, did you order my packet? Uh, not yet. I'm going to. I'm waiting for the money to come in. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still waiting on the money. As the money comes in, I... I'm buying all sorts of things that I... Well, then, instead of ordering the packet, you should order a subscription to Shoestring uh, Entrepreneur. That way you get a bunch of the survivors and you get the the entrepreneur and you start uh, ways to save money and make money that very day. Yes. That's $15. Yeah, I'm going to get that. So you just save and just put aside, just, just sort of don't drink so much or don't smoke so much and whatever until you get that. And then you can do anything you want because you can afford it. Well, I need that. <laughs> okay, buddy. Thank you. You're very welcome. Bye for now. <laughs> Hello, Kurt Saxon here. we got five minutes. The phone number is 501-437-2963. Hello, Kurt Saxon here. Kurt, how you doing? Doing fine. Who am I talking to? This is Paul from Massachusetts. Good for you, Paul. Uh, I, I don't know how many calls you get from this area, but... Uh, Quite a few. It's kind of embarrassing to be from this state, I'll tell you that. Move here. <laughs> I would like to. Well, there's not much intelligent life in Arkansas, but they're good people. <coughs> they're not threatening. Uh, Kurt, I just uh, I'd like to uh, ask you a question. Um, basically, what if if you can line up any intelligent person can see where the government's going and, and, and the progression that it's making. If you could kind of sum up what we can expect, probably in the next five. To Five to ten years? No, two years is about the limit. I wouldn't go beyond that. I don't think okay. we got two years, but with Clinton. But have you ever read Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand? Uh, no, I haven't. You ought to do it. Go to your library. It's a large book, 1,100 pages, but it's fascinating reading, and it tells about how things go downhill when liberals come to power. You see, Ayn Rand was a Russian refugee. She got out of Russia. She lived through the uh, revolution. She got out of Russia. And you see, she knew how it started there. And when she came over here, she could see the signs that it was going that way there, here. And of course, communism since then has collapsed. And so they don't openly talk about communism because it's, it, socialism is an unworkable system. But the dreamer although he doesn't try to implement the things that Karl Marx wrote about anymore, he still has this idea that all men are created equal, that uh, anyone born in, uh, well, if someone born to some ignorant slut and some ignorant stud for a a male father uh, has the same kind, should have the same chance that anybody else and would if he were given the proper environment. So they're going to turn the world upside down to give a beautiful environment to genetic farces. I agree. I agree, Craig. Uh, My my worry is, though, uh, that they they seek to exterminate the European uh, uh, influence, let's say, because they seek revenge, basically, for, for what they see as 
historical, uh, you know, um, dominance throughout yes. history. Um, well, if you if you should subscribe to uh, U.S. Militia, I am reprinting Lothrop Stoddard's classic from 1922, The Revolt Against Civilization. Uh, a fellow from Australia visited me when the first issue came out, and he read the first chapter, and he said, well, he's telling exactly what's happening today. And so what we're talking about was known by many people long ago, but the, the liberal people, for some reason, the, the, the intelligentsia of the United States, they get in science and they work for uh, PBS and they do the documentaries. That's where the brains are. None of the brains uh, go into government. And it's always the losers that move into government, like Clinton. My goodness, a total loser. I, I agree 100 percent, Kurt. Is there is there any hope for theoretically? I know you can't. I, I understand the SEC regulations. Is there any hope uh, theoretically at winning a protracted uh, 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 guerrilla type warfare uh, in a country such as the United States of America? Oh, certainly, with U.S. militia and a set of the poor man's James Bond and a few cronies. You could at least keep your neighborhood safe no matter what. And then when uh, the system collapses and <clears throat> the die-off is over, then uh, decent people will rise again, but uh, the government will become more and more helpless as time goes on. See, we're not living under a despotism. This isn't Russia or China or Nazi Germany. The government has so little authority mainly because of the liberals. See, they, they've cut out all of the laws that would uh, be against criminality, and they, they uh, pat the heads of the, the criminal, the most vicious people in the world, and say, well, it's not their fault. And so it's not your fault either when you fight against them, that people are waking up to that. Well, I thank you very much uh, for, the, for the inspiring uh, work. Well, hang on just about a minute. We've got about a minute, and uh, just talk about a minute more because I don't have enough time for another caller, and I don't want a dead space here. Well, uh, did you order my information packet? Uh, no, I didn't, but it, it's interesting enough, correct? Uh, I follow this type of uh, story. Yes, well, why don't, you, why don't you order it? It'll open your eyes, and uh, like I said, you'll get $5 off on either subscription, and it, uh, it's a new world because I put out material that no one else publishes. And uh, you would really love it. I caught the uh, I caught the time that you were on television. Uh, oh, well, you're fading out somehow. Yes, I'm still here. Okay. I I caught the uh, last time that you were on television. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. Call again tomorrow. Maybe we get you better. Okay. Okay. Bye for now. Now it's sign off time. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So this is Kurt Saxon saying goodbye and be good.